Hi, my name is Kevin and I'm here today to talk to you primarily the difference between a switched generator and a unswitched neutral generator. Um, the code has specific reasons why we need to uh, switch a neutral and why we don't. Uh, we make both models and that's why when you order from us we always ask what's your make and model number because our database will tell us whether that particular generator has a bonded neutral in it or a floating neutral in it. Um, this particular switch switches the neutral. Um, I can tell by looking at the um, wiring. And this one on closer to me does not. Um, the ones that do not are related to the generators that are have floating neutrals. This version allows the neutral in your generator to be connected to the neutral bar in your panel. And the National Electrical Code does not want you to have a generator out there without a bonded neutral. Now, let, let me back up a minute. There is a big difference between what we're talking about in the neutral and the ground rod that you may be thinking of, the grounding of the generator. So let's start with that. Every generator, by manufacturer's recommendation, the frame, the metal section, usually has a little uh, bonding screw on it or a lug on it. And they want you to go from that lug to a, a ground rod or a pipe of some sort. Uh, obviously, you need to be careful if you drive a ground rod or a pipe that you don't drive it into any utility. So you should be calling Dig Safe first. But that is bonding the frame, okay? That is not what we're talking about when you have a floating neutral. A generator with a floating neutral, the neutral inside the generator is not connected to ground. So the National Electrical Code says we need to ground that neutral. So your plug that comes in from your generator and plugs into our switch, we then let your neutral from your generator, we take your neutral and we tie it right to the ground so that it becomes a bond at that particular point and we meet the code applications because they don't want your neutral out there just floating. Now if you have a generator where the neutral is already connected to the frame of the generator itself, then the National Electrical Code says once you bond a neutral in the beginning, at your first means of disconnect, which in this instance would be your generator, once your neutral is bonded at that generator, the National Electrical Code does not want it bonded again. So we then take your neutral, we run it through our switch, and we send that neutral directly to whatever load it's going to. It never gets connected to that ground bus or that neutral bus detail. Uh, it completely skips it. So that is why when you order from us, we always ask, we need your make and model number. Because by that database, we can look and say, yup, that generator has got a bonded neutral, and therefore we need to switch it. Oh, we'll look at, let's say, a Honda or a Yamaha, it depends on the model number. That has a floating neutral. So we'll take that neutral from your generator and we'll connect it to this, to this neutral bus bar and ground it. And that brings us up to the code regulations. The, uh, other, the other issues we run into all the time, again, is people asking us, you know, do I need to ground my generator? Yes, you, you need to ground the frame of your generator. Uh, we've actually had people send me a note telling me that they were disconnecting something in their generator in their bare feet out on the grass and got a shock. Um, not a good practice. Um, I, I'm an electrician, I won't do it. I just won't. We don't know what could possibly happen and why take the chance. So you have to really be extra careful. And there are other things obviously with generators. No generator ever gets run inside. They're all run outside. They should be distance away from the house. We like to tell everybody at least 10 feet. You need to check your local codes and find out what they are. Um, but we tell everybody at least 10 feet with the exhaust facing away. So the issue of the bonded neutral versus the floating neutral in your generator, that's the purpose of the. Now, let's say you buy a generator that is, let's, let's say you bought a, uh, a, a Generac. Most Generacs have bonded neutrals. So you would require this. And for whatever reason, you sell your Generac and you decide to buy a Honda. 
you then need this. Our generator switches are convertible. Um, they can be converted, they're, they're, they're easy for us. We can do them literally in under a minute. But if you do purchase one and you get, you happen to purchase a, a switch neutral type and you buy a new generator, send us an email and we'll direct you whether you need to make a change in there or whether you're good the way you are. But if you do buy one, you're not stuck with that particular model. Uh, again, they're convertible. Uh, the switch, going from a switch to an unswitched is instant almost. It, it, there's virtually no work at all. The other way around, you need a couple of wires and we need to change a couple of things. But e either way, you're not going to be hurt by if you get the wrong one or, again, if you change the generator. So if you have any questions about switched or unswitched or if you switch generators, just contact us. We'll be happy to help. Uh, I, hope that, I hope that helps. Please visit us at our website and thank you very much.